This is a meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Southwick Public Library. It is March 8th at 7.05 p.m. Um, we do not have a quorum this meeting, so we will not be voting on any items. Um, we do need to have someone take minutes, though. Okay. All right. Cindy's the Cindy's the brave one. Okay. Go around the room to identify. Who's yes. Here. Oh, yes, please. <clears throat> yep. Uh, so, Lynn Blair, Tammy Sayak Pasama, Michael McMahon, Cindy Warner. Perfect. And I <clears throat> see nobody in Zoom, but I'll keep an eye on that. Um, so we have no public comments um, for communications. Um, we have a busy month of programming for March. Um, and Cindy, let me know if I'm going too fast. I am a fast talker, especially when I really get going. Um, so we have a busy month of programming for March. Um, just this morning, Molly hosted a police department story time. So I think there were two to three officers here. The kids got to go in the car. So it was a lot of fun. Um, we had um, two LSTA events. We had one last week on tips for job seekers. And I have um, one on Monday, March 14th on dealing with ageism. And the response for that one has been extremely popular. I have almost 20 people signed up for wow. it. So. The okay. response has been wonderful. Tips for job seekers. Yep. And what was the other? Dealing with ageism. Okay. Yep. So we, yes. And then we have a bunch of other programs going on. So it looks like March is going to be a very, a very busy month. Um, the Greater Westfield Chamber of Commerce will be hosting their After Fives program tomorrow here from 5 to 7 p.m. So um, we'll have a lot of businesses represented from the Southwick and Westfield area. And I've kind of got a, a little setup, but I may jazz it up later tomorrow. So we'll have a setup with all information about the library, um, what we can do for businesses, job seekers, anything like that. Um, I've made four new additions to our seed library. So, and that seems to be going really well. Um, I did a big post on Facebook and we've gotten a huge response. I think just in the last week, we've had 20 packets taken. So that's been great. We have a new addition to our library of things. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> stop, <laughs> just stop. This is like, okay. I told you I was a fast talker. Okay. So 20 packets this week, go ahead. Um, we have new additions to the library of things. Um, we're getting, we, we have a power washer and a metal detector. And unfortunately, I was not able to find Jeremiah's contact information. Um, so I'm, I'm going to keep looking around. And I want to test both of those items before we put them out for public use so that if people ask me how to use them, I will know. Did you ask Pat Odeon? I think I did. Yes, I can, I can check in again just on the off chance that I didn't. But... Yeah, because I'd really love to do like a metal detecting program. Yeah. That would be really fun. And um, all staff attended a cybersecurity training hosted by the town last week. So everybody attended a variety of sessions. And just uh, it was just a helpful reminder on how to keep things secure, you know, changing your passwords, security, how to, when and when not to trust an email, when it looks suspicious, don't click the links, kind of things like that, that it's helpful to get a reminder of. And on an interesting note, um, David Sutton, who's the new head of buildings and grounds, um, somehow found out that our boundary line is wrong. So we actually own more than we thought we did into the woods over here. Oh. So he's going to, he already planned to take some trees down because there's some that are like looking not too good over the building. Um, so it sounds like he's gonna take even more trees down to get more space. Hmm. And um, lastly, um, 
we had the climate week programs of uh, September of last year. And I'm working with um, two of the local organizers of the climate week that they helped get all the other local libraries involved. And um, we created an abstract because there's, there's a, a pair of librarians or I think they're librarians. They are working on some type of professional development book to talk about like programs and things that libraries have done to kind of be a model for other libraries to replicate. Um, so we wrote an abstract for that. It was accepted. So we, now we need to write like a full chapter to see if we can get it published in that book. Nice. Basically just what we did about Climate Week, how basically how they got started, how they got the libraries involved and um, how everybody hosted events and got the word out. So that should be interesting. And that was it for me. So we cannot, since we don't have a quorum, we cannot approve the January and February meeting minutes. So we will need to postpone those until the April meeting. And then in April, um, we'll do January, February, and March. So if Cindy can type that up and send it to me, I can send it to everybody else. That would be fantastic. And everybody should have a copy of the February statistics. Okay, wait, wait, before you switch gears, yes, yes, let me yes. catch up here. Mm -hmm. Yes, everybody has a copy of um, the February statistics. And again, it was another another fantastic month. 4,652 physical items in February, which in itself is a short month. The weather is terrible. And we were closed, I think at least for a day, maybe a day and a half for snow. So that's that is wonderful. We are, we are very happy about that. And again, 16 new card holders. So all very good. So um, if you look at the bottom at fiscal year 2021, we've already surpassed from July to February, we've surpassed um, our circulations for fiscal year 2021. Great. Okay. So, and then included on the second page are just um, a breakdown of the evening daytime versus evening statistics as well, so that we have that and keep track of that. If there are no other questions, I will pause for a break to let Cindy catch up and then we'll move on. Great. Um, so old business, an update on the LSTA grant. Um, the tables have arrived and now we're just waiting on the chairs for the study spaces. Um, and then hopefully those should arrive by the end of the month so we can kick off those spaces in April. Technically, I, I wanted to give us some time to get ready to figure out a method of attack. I know people have been asking to use them already, but we just got the tables put together and um, I really don't want to pair those blue chairs with the, you know what I mean? And put those in there because it's not like the look we're going for. Oh. Like I got nice black chairs to match the black table. And I don't want to like have people's first impression be those sad little blue chairs. <laughs> so, and um, you're calling this a study space. Yeah. Study meeting space. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
So yeah, each each section is going to have a couple chairs, and um, we had a little bit of funds left over, so um, we're going to take a risk, and we're going to get whiteboards for each of the meeting spaces, and hopefully nobody writes on the wall. But at least you know, at least we'll know who reserved the study space, and then maybe we'll have a method of like signing out the markers or something. So <laughs> you know, if you reserved it for this time, we know who's been writing on the walls. So. I think that'll be a nice touch, you know, if mm -hmm. people are doing homework or meeting or whatever. So and make sure people use the right kind of mark. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we will have the special markers, and those are the only ones. <laughs> um, under new business, um, I, I told you guys I would give you an update on the HVAC technology fees. Last month I reported that they were looking at $364.79 a month for this. Um, and basically, I talked to Jim Middleton and got some extra clarification because I wanted to be sure. So this would have been for HVAC monitoring so that they could monitor it remotely, um, as well as a static IP address. However, they're looking into other prices. So it's still on the table. Oh. They're looking into other directions. So it, it doesn't look like it's going to appear in this year's budget. So it may just be something for further on down the line. So the good news is, is I'm not worrying about that right now. So, um, and I know, I, I mean, I know we, we don't technically have to, I gave everybody a copy in the papers I gave you of the survey that I wrote up for April, 2022. And I don't think that really needs to be voted on. I mean, but yeah, there, so there's a draft I'll give Cindy, give you guys a, I'll take a pause. Cindy can catch up, give you guys a chance to read it. Very basic, very short. Um, the longer it is, the less likely people are to fill it out, so. And I didn't number the questions, but one, two, three, four, seven, eight. So there's eight questions. Um, and I think it kind of covers everything that we want to know. How often you visit, what would you bring, what would bring you in more? How do you hear about things? Um, but also, you know, I think I, I always like to ask, you know, what changes or developments do you see happening in Southwick in the near future? Because that can give us an idea of potential needs or things that are going to come up soon. And also a plug at the end um, that we'll begin working on our strategic plan soon. And if anybody's interested to give me a holler by email. So Maybe we'll get somebody who's interested in helping out with that. So this, this I'm planning to make available April 1st, um, as long as that isn't a Saturday. I don't think it is a Saturday, but um, April 1st to April 30th, I will have copies here and online. And, uh, and Michelle said I can leave them in the town hall lobby too. So maybe, maybe that'll get some people, I don't know. But we'll try to blast it out in as many ways as possible to get as much feedback as possible. Um, if there are no questions or comments on that, um, Heather Dunphy and I are working on um, new resident welcome packets. So we're going to mail out this postcard to all um, new residents in town basically saying, welcome to town, welcome to Southwick. Here's kind of a little blurb about what the library has. When they come in and visit us, we'll have a whole packet of information and stuff to give out to them. And April then first is on a Friday, by the way. Oh, that works. Yeah, it's Friday's fine. Yeah, so that, that packet will be for new residents, but we also decided that it might be nice to have something to hand out to people who, you know, even if they are a longtime member of town and they sign up for a card to give them to. So we'll have- So you're gonna have Southwoods or somebody print these up? Or? They already did, yep. yep. Oh. We, got a, we got a running of 100, so we should be good for a while, mm -hmm. yeah. It looks very nice. Yeah, they, they, we sent them the picture and the info and they designed it for us, which is really nice. Yeah, so those, um, we're gonna start, we're, we're kind of compiling everything we want to be in the packet right now. And we're hoping in the beginning of April that we can get that kicked off. So what kind of information will you have in there? So um, it basically includes our welcome to the Southwick Library. So what we have kind of 
the not so fun stuff like you know how how long things go out for but also we have pamphlets on um the library of things books on the go um about the the brain fuse the the job searching help database yeah, I can't wait to look at that. <laughs> and um and heather and molly also designed a really nice brochure that encompasses children's and YA services. So that'll also be in there as well. So it's basically just a, a handout of everything that, that we have. Um, we decided not to include things like the, um, the library links because then we'd have to go through and change everything every right. month. Yeah. So it's basically gonna be stuff that's, that's non-dated, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. You might want to consider this, and if it's up to you. Yes, and I, I didn't. I did include. You gave me a, a pamphlet. Oh, good. This is the updated one because we don't have one from 2022. I did include the EDC has like a, a welcome or a guide to Southwick or like mm -hmm. welcome to Southwick. I included that as well, and I'll include this. And and yeah, um, so I think I think it'll be really good, and that way, even you know, if they're not a new resident, they can still get. You'll get a whole lot of something. And um, the, the last thing that I have on here is um, there has been, we, we subscribe to Hoopla Digital Services. So we have two, are you, am I going too fast, Cindy? No. Okay. So we have two places where we get our um, digital items from. So we have um, Overdrive and Libby, which is through CW Mars. Um, so we get that as part of the network. But then we also signed up for Hoopla um, a couple years ago, and they include a lot of um, they include a lot more media. So like they have music that you can download, entire albums, um, TV shows, movies, things like that. Um, and so we've had them since 2020. And there has been a big controversy going on with them in the past. I think I started up in the past couple of weeks, or at least that's when I was made aware of it, that there has been um, questions about their collection development policies because um, Librarians found items in their catalog that potentially in their, their different pages, but it's that have um, potentially anti Semitic. Um, All I had to see was three words. Yes, yeah. So, so there's been a big controversy as to the quality. Uh, and this is, this is another one that unfortunately printed on a yellow page, but it's just another example of. Um, what people have found in there. So it, it calls into question the issue of, you know, censorship and, and that aspect of the issue. But there's there's been a lot of question about their collection development policies and how these things have made it through kind of their, you know, I guess I would call it quality control. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's been some there's been some questionable items in there, and I guess from from the librarian standpoint is that you know, with our collection, like we can order what we have here, so we know what we have. With these digital collections, it's them ordering, so we don't always know what's in there until somebody points it out if there's an issue or concern. So I think that's what kind of got a lot of librarians a little upset about mm -hmm. and as well as some of the topics in there are very extremely controversial um so i wanted to put it forward to you guys so you are aware of it um there's there's a kind of a continued discussion with cwmr's libraries and they're going to continue the discussion at the users council next week which is basically when all the library directors and administrators get together and vote on new CWMR's policies, so on and so forth. And they're also going to do a discussion of this because some libraries are considering canceling them altogether. Um, but you know, I'm 
I'm not sure yet. I want, I, I'd like to get more information. Basically, when they wrote to Hoopla to say, how did these things end up in the catalog? You know, the, the CEO or the chair, there was an apology. You know, when they do their collection development, they have people review things, but <coughs> there also seems to be some kind of automated aspect of their collection development as well. So these somehow got through, I guess you could call them the gatekeepers, but so, so I'm, I'm on the fence until we get more information um, because I guess it could also be seen as, you know, there's, there's also the question of censorship and things like that. But so I just, I just wanted to make you all aware. Um, Cause it's just in the last six months or a year around the country, there's a lot of questions about publications. And I'm not saying they're right or wrong. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, so what, um, what's kind of the consensus of the librarians you've heard from? Um, a lot of them are on the fence as well. I think that when they sent out a survey, a majority were on the fence. Some said no, they weren't going to cancel, and some said yes, they were going to cancel. So I think the majority is on the fence. Um, obviously, CW Mars doesn't, you know, we don't go through CW Mars to get this. Right. So it's kind of up to the individual libraries as to what they want to do. So you said other than the company saying, gee, I wonder, you know, how that happened. Yeah, essentially, um, they said it was an oversight and quality control. So, which from, from the responses I've seen that other libraries have sent, it's been, you know, yeah, they, they really didn't give, um, you know, other than they're taking steps to improve their process um, and that they use both human and system driven reviews and screenings. So somehow, you know. Okay, so how, so how does a Southwick resident who utilizes the library get access to this stuff? They, all they would need to do is have an account with Hoopla, have a library card, log in and they can check it out. So essentially, I mean, anybody could have access to it. Okay. And when they check it out, the literature comes here and they pick nope, it up this, here? It's all digital. So it's all it digital. All, digital. Oh, all, right. all, goes okay. to, all goes to their own devices. Um, so nothing, okay. nothing comes through our hands physically. But I mean, I guess it's still the idea that, you know, we are, we are representing their collection, you know, Right. We subscribe to them, so their collection is what we're offering our patrons. And I guess it also begs the question: What else is in there that right. you know maybe hasn't been noticed yet? So, how, how much does this cost per year? It it depends. It depends. Um, the hoopla is is pay by circulation. Oh, okay. So, like, whereas Overdrive, we get a one one bill, but we get charged by circulation per item. So I think it's usually maybe one to two hundred dollars a month, depending on how much use it, it varies from month to month. So it, it depends on the usage. Um, and I was looking back. So in 2020, we circulated 948 items. Um, in 2021, we circulated 832. And so far in 2022, it's been 175. So I mean. It's not as well used as Libby, which is Overdrive through CW Mars, our other digital collection. Um, and I mean, that, that in itself, you know, might be a reason for us to consider just focusing our attentions on Libby and marketing that. But, so like I said, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence. I'm in, I'm in the boat with most of the other libraries is that I'm on the fence, you know, I, I need, Maybe they will. Maybe they will fix things. Maybe they will do better quality control about when they order their items. But there's also the question of, I mean, <coughs> we don't. We don't know. We don't know what they order month to month or what they add to their collections month to month. I mean, with our own physical collection, I know what I order, so I know what's coming in. But with these, it's you know, so. I mean, I don't know if there's any any input or thoughts on it, but 
I can I could wait and see and report back as to what the what the consensus is at the users council, what most people are thinking. Um, but I also well, what they're offering is it better or a larger collection than this Libby or, or whatever. Libby, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Libby Libby is um Libby offers more books and audiobooks. So Libby Libby is more, I would say, literature heavy. Hoopla covers more of the almost the pop culture stuff. So the music, the TV shows, um, that but they have books as well, but that's not kind of their main their main focus. It's more of the media. Um, the nice thing about Hoopla is, is that things are instantaneous. So everything's always available. Whereas with Libby, people may have to wait, you know. So people so like each version depending. How's you usage it through the library? of Hoopla versus Libby. Versus Libby is Hoopla. always a much, much higher, much higher. So, I mean, potentially, potentially, you know, depending on what other libraries are doing, maybe we just focus our attention on Libby and marketing that as opposed to trying to market both. Do you have long-term contracts? I mean, are you signing up for six months or a year, or are you can yeah. just drop it after? A no, there's or there's a period. I it, I believe it's I believe it's 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 six months or so. I'd have to look back to be hundred percent sure, so don't quote me on that. Well, but there is a there is a period that you have to give them in order to cancel. So the first question now yeah. is. What is Hoopla's response once things are brought to their attention? Their response is essentially um, they are, they're going yeah. to try to improve. They're going to try to improve. Yes. So they, yeah, they, they sent around a big letter um, <coughs> to all the libraries. You know, they were recently contacted with complaints um, and they, they have it kind of bullet pointed. So they've removed these items from the collection. They explained how they made it into the collection, but also they highlighted that this is a complex matter and they discussed, you know, the kind of idea of censorship and things like that. Right, exactly. So, yeah. Because I, I don't like the idea of censorship. Yeah, exactly. I don't particularly like the right. subject matter but if somebody was doing a comparative essay, yeah, and well, and that's and that's, the, opinions. that's the thing, you know, some some items have value in like those items may have value in more of a research collection. I guess the way I look at it, Hoopla is more of an entertainment center. Right. Like, I don't, I can't say for sure what people do, but. I, I have a feeling that their collections are more geared towards recreational items as opposed to something that somebody would go to to look for academic material. Right. You know, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like you said, pop, more popular pop yeah, culture. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Which I think is why it was surprising, you know, those books may have a home in an academic library where if, you know, if somebody were to go to research, but to be found in a collection that's more recreational media pop culture ish it almost doesn't right. belong i think i just would like to hear more what comes out of the meeting the council okay. meeting and just yeah. kind of yeah yeah and then i can, yeah, I keep can us posted. That. yeah because yeah. i agree with sydney i don't i not something i would ever want to right. look at or support but i'm also against censorship too so yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah so i can i can i can collect um collect responses and then and then we'll see because I mean, yeah, if they were, were putting warning labels on it, you know, so that you knew that this was. Just out of curiosity, if you, I don't even know if you know this, but is it, do they somehow have some kind of um, control or some kind of things so like anybody can access it with a library card, but is it like over a certain age? So a five year old? Right. Could potentially could or... potentially go in there. It's possible that they could go in there and find it. But the same five year old could go on the internet and find yeah, it. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I was just curious. Yeah. So I can I can kind of gather the responses, test the waters, and see what everybody else is thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
Because I, yeah, I also don't want to, you know, jump the gun and, you know, I'm, I, I really don't want to get involved in you yeah. know, the, the yeah. idea of censorship, I think can be very, that's a, you know, that's, 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 that's not what we see what they are, you know, what they, what Hoopla themselves decides to do internally. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like they removed it, but um, some, one of the, one of the state librarians um, somewhere in the state came up with a spreadsheet so that every time somebody finds something, you know, in mm -hmm. there that's potentially <laughs> not so good, they, they kind of everybody would say, yeah. yeah. But uh, but I mean, some there's there's always something that offends somebody. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's kind of a hard. It's a hard. So I think I think yeah, we're gonna test the waters and and see what other people think, and I mean, we can go from there. For the most part, we kind of rely on your professional judgment. Yeah, yeah. I just well, I yeah. wanted to make you all aware because I'm I'm hesitant to to kind of jump the gun and be like, you know, we're gonna we're gonna cancel. Because if there's patrons of ours that use the feature and enjoy the feature, you know, we don't want to just take it away without a really good right. we can't really say. I mean, and we maybe maybe Hoopla will do better. Maybe this this is their you know, this is their wake up call that maybe, you know, whatever these automated review systems, maybe that's just not working. I mean, so yeah, I can, I can report back next, next month. That's how, how did you find like increasing the speed? Has that worked out? Oh, it's been wonderful. Yeah, no issues. I mean, there's every so often that Evergreen kind of crashes, but that's like usually, you know, when like the busiest time of day when it's trying to process a lot of information it crashes but but otherwise it's been fantastic so but that was that was it from me mm -hmm. so you're all set for the upcoming saturday morning hearing yeah i should be i'm gonna i'm gonna pull everything together and um and hope for the best. Yeah. This past Saturday, they seem to be in a good mood, at least early in the morning. Okay. With the first yeah. few things. Yeah. With this budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think um I think, you know, I think mostly what the last question is about is the new position right. that I'm hoping to hire for as well as an increase in salary for Heather. Mm -hmm. So I mean if we have solid reasoning, then Go for the Lamborghini. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, pretty In much. the hot tub. Yes. <laughs> now that you're going to have we, more if land. If we only get the hot tub, then that's okay. <laughs> but yeah, no. a little bit of land. Unfortunately, it's kind of like, it, there's a lot of shade and it's kind of mossy over there. So it's not great land, but I mean. But at least if trees aren't hanging all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's area. that's kind of what they want to yeah. yeah. get fixed. Yeah. So that's really good. Yeah, because last Saturday, at least for, for the first half hour or so, when they were going through, most people were looking for big additions. One department said, I want an extra 10000 for such and such. Somebody else wanted some other big stuff. Nobody was saying, I'm dealing with zero or minus five. Oh, okay. All. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we really can't can't do that without affecting any of our right. any of our requirements. And I mean, I think the, the only, we aren't asking for any increases in any of our line items other than just the new staff person, which I think was a little under $10,000 a year, mm -hmm. and an increase for Heather, which I think came out to be $5,000. So it's, it's not that much. And from what you read in the newspaper, because either in the Westfield News or maybe Mass Live in the last day or two, state revenue the money coming into the state coffers again is x number of hundreds of millions of dollars more per month than they projected so the revenue is there it's not a matter of well people can't pay it or people aren't buying stuff so sales tax revenue is down same as the talent they increase the assessments they're not having problems they're not having like a large development say we can't pay our bill or we can't pay the water bill or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. And with and with the way our circulation has been so far, I mean, 
we've been busy. I've never seen us as busy. So we can, we can, even if we're not as busy at night, to only have one circulation staff, like on nights that we have cook book club, or like on nights like tomorrow night, or we have a big group coming uh -huh. in, and the friends are meeting as well, to have one person only on the circulation desk is, is too much for that one person. So are you gonna, are you going in person? Oh, I, I, I hate Zoom. I was okay, okay, good. Because I'm like, I'm like, I, I don't want to do this over Zoom. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go in person. So at least I'm not the only one. <laughs> All right. Somebody here asked, do we need to make a motion to close? Sure. So our next meeting, yeah. our next meeting is April, Paul's checking the door, um, April 12th. All right, and time is it? It is 741. 